Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the role of ATP in energy transfer. You should then be able to describe the role of hydrogen carriers in respiration. Now this is the first video on the topic on respiration. Respiration is a large topic with some concepts that may look challenging. It's very important that you watch all of the videos in order and do your best to understand each one. It will also be much easier if you jot down key ideas from each video before you watch the next one. And you may need to watch some videos several times to get the ideas. If you do this, you'll find that respiration is actually relatively straightforward. OK, now energy is essential for all living organisms. For example, energy is needed for processes such as active transport and movement. We also need energy to build complex molecules such as proteins. Now the energy that we need comes from the process of respiration. I'm showing you here the equation for the aerobic respiration of glucose. But you'll see that we can also use lipids and proteins in respiration. In this topic, we'll be looking in detail at the reactions involved in respiration and how energy is transferred from respiratory substrates such as glucose. Now a critical molecule in energy transfer is adenosine triphosphate or ATP. I'm showing you the simplified structure of ATP here and you need to learn this. ATP has the base adenine bonded to the pentose sugar ribose and together we call this part of the molecule adenosine. On the other side of the ribose we have three phosphate groups. Now ATP is an energy carrying molecule. If we react ATP with water the end phosphate can leave and this reaction releases energy. This energy can then be used in the cell for processes such as active transport or movement. Reacting ATP with water is an example of a hydrolysis reaction and this is catalyzed by the enzyme ATP hydrolase, which is also called ATPase. At the end of the reaction, we've made adenosine diphosphate or ADP. We've also released a phosphate ion. Now the phosphate ion has the symbol PI. The I tells us that the phosphate is inorganic. In other words, it's not bonded to a carbon containing molecule. So as you can see, ATP is an extremely important molecule, providing energy for processes that need it. Now once an ATP molecule has been hydrolyzed, it then has to be reformed in order to be used again. And ATP is formed during respiration, using the energy stored in glucose. When ATP is reformed, energy from glucose is used to add a phosphate ion back onto ADP. This process is called phosphorylation. Now there are two processes in respiration that can reform ATP. These are called substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation produces the vast majority of ATP during respiration. We'll be looking at both substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation in later videos. Okay, so as we've seen, cells use the energy stored in glucose to produce ATP in respiration. I'm showing you the structure of glucose here. During respiration, a large number of chemical reactions gradually break down the glucose molecule. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that during some of these reactions, a hydrogen ion is released. This is called a dehydrogenation or oxidation reaction. In this case, the hydrogen ion has two electrons, and I'm showing that here. These hydrogen ions are rich in energy, and they can be used to form large quantities of ATP. This takes place during oxidative phosphorylation, which we'll see in a later video. Now, when a hydrogen ion is released, it's added to a molecule called a hydrogen carrier. A good example of a hydrogen carrier is the coenzyme NAD. By adding the hydrogen with its two electrons to NAD, we carry out a reduction reaction and we've made reduced NAD. Reduced NAD is also called NADH, but I'll be calling it reduced NAD in these videos. And as you'll see later, reduced NAD is a very important molecule in respiration. In the next video, we look at the first part of respiration, which is called glycolysis. 